Now, okay, so you believe that came first in the Hindu? The Hindu is the oldest religion. Well, I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about beliefs. Like, do you believe that Adam and Eve was the first human that appeared on the earth? Do you believe that? So you believe man came from, you believe a woman came from man or man came from a woman? I believe what the scriptures say, that, they, that God took the rib from Adam and he created the woman. How is that possible? As anything is possible with God. But we know that we came from a woman. Everybody in this world come from a woman, correct? No, they don't, because without a man, you can't, nothing can be created. No, I'm saying everybody <laughs> have to be born through a woman, right. including a man. That is correct, but that doesn't mean, but you still need the man in order to create. Yeah, but. Because God created the man first, and the woman came from the man. You can't have anybody, none of us can be born without the man. Yeah, but who do you know that came from a man, like like the Bible saying? Well, we didn't, even Jesus didn't come from a man. He came from Mary. You know, God put him, put exactly. him in, his, in so the womb. So can, how can a right. woman come from a man, really? How, because that's how God created women. How do we know that? Well, we know that. Because biologically, that don't work. It does work when it comes from God. It's just like, well, who created all the animals? We don't know. So you don't believe. So what do you believe? I honestly don't know. I don't. I don't know who created or, or who or what created everything. I don't know that. Right. You but don't you know do. That do you believe? You there. But no. But do you believe that there was a creator? Possibly. Okay. okay. But because, how do we know who that creator is? Right. Because, like I said, the Bible talks about the creator, and it tells you exactly how he. But who was there in, in the beginning? In Genesis chapter one, who was there to write about what happened? God inspired the Bible. It's just like, you know, you think about a secretary and a boss. You know, he might, the secretary has their thoughts, their ways of writing things down, but the boss can say, hey, I want you to write this, that, and the other. Whose writing is it? Is it the secretary's writing or is it the boss? Did God write it? He didn't. He inspired it to be written. And they're very can interesting. God inspire you to write something? No, absolutely not. <laughs> you saying you can't be inspired by God? I could be inspired, but not to write. The Bible is complete. Why there's not? no, there's no more addition to the Bible. Who said it was complete? It says it in the Bible, in Where? Revelation, the last book in the Bible. It talks about that. So God is no longer speaking today. He is no longer. He has no reason to right now because he's already given. The reason he did it back in those times was to give evidence. It was to give proof of things. So that people could build their faith. See, that's the key word, evidence. Mm -hmm. In the book, he gave evidence. Mm -hmm. But he's not giving evidence today. No, he's not. So no, why should we believe him? Mm -hmm. So he's given his whole entire Bible so that we can build our faith. But he showed the disciples miracles. Yeah, he did. But he's not doing it today. He's not. And you know why? It's not necessary. And you know why it's not necessary? Because even those, those uh, miracles that were performed... People still didn't have faith. They were there and still didn't have faith. Jesus said, if you do not believe in me, at least believe in the works that I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't have those works to do. We leave. don't, but we, have, we don't need them. Like I said. Why did they need they're, them? They're, they needed them because they didn't know. We know because we, we have, they, know didn't, they, didn't have, have. they didn't have the complete Bible like we do. We have the complete Bible, the complete book of God. We have it. They you didn't have, have that. Have they had religion. they had scrolls and they had little bits and pieces, but they needed to know. So he inspired. He gave them. Let's like for instance, the how are they going to know the Messiah when he's coming? He gave them evidence. This is going to happen. That's going to happen. This is going to happen. So that when they saw these things happen, they said, "Oh, this is the Messiah. Oh, this is the prophecy being fulfilled." Well, in the Old Testament, it says, "No man can die for your sins." Man. No man. An imperfect man, right? He just said no man. Was okay. Jesus a man? He was a perfect man. How do you know that? Because God made sure that he, because he, that would be the only way that he could give his life. Because Adam lost perfection. It would need, a, it was a ransom. It had to be the same. You know, it's 18 years missing from Jesus' life from the Bible. Every, you know what? There's it, it a scripture. I can't think of it right now, but it says, 
everything that Jesus did when he was on the earth could not possibly be all written in one book because he did so much. So how do you know he was perfect? Because he was, he was God's son. You know, and he died for us. And nobody, you know, all the things that Jesus went through to die for mankind, he had to be. Who would want to be treated the way he was treated? So Jesus said that, why do you call me good? He said, only the Father is right, good. Right, right. Which tells so you he's talking how, about his Father. How can you believe that he was perfect if he said he wasn't good? Because he didn't want people to focus on him. He wanted people to focus on his Father. Because that's the reason he came. He came to speak on his Father's will. He came to teach people what his father's purpose was. Paul he didn't said, want to take that glory. That's what happened with Satan. Satan wanted glory. He wanted glory for himself. So Paul that's said that there is none good, not even one. Mm -hmm. He didn't say except Jesus. Right. So you think Paul was including Jesus? Romans well, of course, as a, as a man, Paul did think Jesus was good, and Jesus was good. But Jesus didn't want to be called no, good no, because saying, he didn't Paul want to. Paul said there is none good, not even one. So that includes Jesus, right? Well, it doesn't. It Romans does in a three. sense. Three. Okay, Romans chapter 3. Okay. There is none Romans. good, not even one. He should have said, man, except Jesus. He didn't say that. He said there is none chapter good. Chapter 3 and verse 1. None righteous. Oh, it's, it's in chapter 3. I don't know what verse. Oh, okay. You have to Google it. Uh, well, I'm at Romans There's 3. Let's see. Yes. There is not one good. None righteous. Where does two? There is no one who has any insight. There is no one who searches for God. So I don't know. I would have to read the whole context of what it said, but that's y'all have to see right there. There is none good, none righteous, not even one. All have sinned and fallen short, short of the glory. That's all the glory of God. Oh yeah. From the yes, exactly. Oh yeah, exactly. That's including that's, Jesus, right? Not including Jesus. That's what it's saying. It's not including Jesus, though. It's Jesus. Don't say except Jesus. Say all have sinned. But Jesus is not included. Because Jesus is if not he was a human. A man, he, is. he was a man because God sent him. But he's not. Where is he now? Where is Jesus now? I don't know. Jesus is in heaven. That's what the scriptures say. He is God's king right now in we heaven. Know that, I know that based on the scriptures. And it's like you quote the scriptures. You believe something you're reading no, in the scriptures. No, because that's what you believe in. Yeah. That's well, what I, I do. I do believe the scriptures. But I'm telling you why I don't believe it. Because it's mm -hmm. inconsistent. But it's not inconsistent because you can't read one scripture and then don't take all the other scriptures in the Bible. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, yeah. He who knew no sin became sin. God made him sin. Mm -hmm. So how can you say he was perfect if God made him sin? Not 2 Jesus, Corinthians 5, 21. That wasn't talking about Jesus. Pull it up. It's not talking about Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Paul talking about Jesus. He knew no sin. You say he knew no sin. Yeah, right. But God made him sin. He said the one who did not know sin, he, he, made, sin. he made to be sin for us. So that by means of him, we might become God's righteous. So that's because Jesus died for us. He to take away sin, our sin. Right? right, he did. So how can he be perfect? He didn't take on our sin in that sense. He took on our sin and uh, our, our, our sin in the sense that he died for us so that we will not in the future. This is all part of Bible prophecy. If you know Bible prophecy, there's hundreds of years passed before actual fulfillment of Bible prophecy. So this is part of Bible prophecies that in the future, we won't have sin. So we won't, we won't have, have to die for sin. No, we won't. Why do we still die? We die now because of what Adam and Eve did. But Jesus supposed to took our punishment. Not now, because we still have to prove ourselves righteous. We have to prove ourselves righteous. We have to do God's will. That's what Jesus taught. But it just says that Jesus became sin for us, correct? He didn't become sin. He, he made saying. a means for us to 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 our sins to be taken away. So you didn't just read it right now what he said. He it didn't say he became sin. sin. It didn't say that. It says it by me, it says, the one who did not know sin, he made to be sin. 
okay. for us, yeah, so right that up. by means of 